Th this uh. guy said the cutest thing a while ago. He's from Miami. Yeah. He said, and he was dead serious. He said, boy, it's so nice to see this gloomy weather. I get so sick of the sunshine <laughs> all the time. And I thought that was so funny. <laughs> okay, we're on a one shot of me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good evening, I'm Jim Whaley. Tonight it's a great pleasure to welcome to Cinema Showcase one of America's great entertainers, Miss Dolly Parton. She makes her film debut in the film Nine to Five with Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin. Later on in the program, I'll be talking with special effects wizard Maurice Bender. So I hope you will join me tonight as I talk with Dolly Parton and Maurice Bender on Cinema Showcase. Did you say your last name was? Whaley. Whaley? Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that's my dad's people. Uh, last name was Whaley, too. His mom and some. Yeah. A lot of Whaley's A lot of Whaley's in, in East Tennessee, yeah. yeah. Will you cue me where we're going? No. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Dolly, thanks so much for taking this time out. Well, it's my pleasure. Anybody from Atlanta, any part of the South, I'd jump at the chance. Good How for you. How you doing? Good for you. <laughs> now, you have... Um, conquered the recording business, television, and now movies. I've got to ask you, what was your reaction the first day on the set of 9 to 5? <laughs> well, it was overwhelming. I don't know exactly how to describe the feeling. I was extremely excited. I was real uh, uh, flattered that they had wanted me in that particular film because I, I wanted to do some films. and. It wasn't a lifelong dream of mine. It's just that the last two or three years, because when I've been on television, a lot of the movie companies had started calling uh, my management, trying to get me in the film. But I didn't want to do a picture just for the sake of doing the movies. So I hadn't found anything I liked. And then when this came about, I thought, wow, this is a great way to start and to work with great people that I really loved in, in film. And I think that Jane Fonda is one of the better people that's ever been in, in films. And I, and I love Lily. She's one of the more creative people. And I thought, well, this would be great. And it would be a wonderful way to start. And we became great friends. It was a challenge. And so I think it was just a bunch of mixed emotions that first day. But it was just excitement, yeah. mostly. Was there any particularly tough part to it for you? Well, the, the tough part, hmm. I guess the toughest part was just the waiting around, the long hours in between. And I'm used to work, and you know how we do, we're just up and around all the time. And the long hours in between scenes, I got into reading a lot of books, though, that I've been wanting to read, and I got into writing a lot of songs. I wrote the theme song, 9 to 5, on the set. And uh, another one of the hard parts was that the very first day that I was on the set, I did that love scene with my husband in the movie where I had to kiss somebody else. I'd never, uh, you know, I'd wondered what it'd be like to kiss somebody in the movies. And, and we wasn't planning to do that. It wasn't in the script. It's just when we got to playing that role, the director decided, um, you know, that it would be a good thing to finish that scene with that. So we did. But that was real awkward and real uncomfortable to do. I've always wondered, even with people who have been in the business for 25 years, uh, who have done love scenes for years and years, how you can go on to a, a cold movie set at 8 o'clock in the morning and be expected to do a love scene. Trust me, it's not easy. And even that was not even like an involved love scene. It was just a sweet little part there. But, and to beat it all, the guy that played my husband was a friend of mine and, and the husband of a real good friend of mine, the girl that works at the office. Although he got the part on his own talent, I didn't even know he was going to play the part of my husband until mm -hmm. like a few days before. So it, it made it clumsy and awkward all around. <laughs> what about going to the dailies, or the rushes? Did you do that? Yeah, went every day. Because uh, I'm the kind of person I can be real critical about myself and I can also learn, uh, you know, from what I see. And, uh, you know, I wanted to see, I wanted to know, you know, what things I needed to do different or what I shouldn't be doing at all and all that. So, yeah, you go. It's, it's kind of a thrill. Yeah. Now, you mentioned, uh, of course, you wrote the song, the theme song, Nine to Five. In writing the songs you do, and I must tell you, I, I like very much your new album. Good, thank you. Uh, is there any particular method of work to it? Which generally comes first, the lyrics or the music? Well, with me, it almost always comes at the same time. I just sit down. If I'm in a writing mood, a creative mood, I just feel I've got something I want to say that wants to come out. And I usually just sit down with my guitar and I just start singing, and it, uh, it just kind of all comes at once. Mm -hmm. What well, do you... Like on the album, there's a song, I think, called Poor Folks Town. Yeah. Which I like very much. Good, thanks. Uh, songwriters, I know, draw on personal experiences mm -hmm. when they write songs. Is this a big part of 
of your songwriting? Yeah, a big part of, of my songs are written around things I've felt, things I've seen, or, or just part of my life that sung Poor Folks Town. We grew up very poor as far as money, material things, but we were very rich as people. We had a lot of pride. When people say poverty stricken, it almost hurts my feelings, you know, when people say I'm from a poverty stricken family because there's so many ways to be poor. We always had food to eat. You know, we didn't have a big variety and all that, but I mean, we, we had great parents and a good home. And, and the fact that we didn't have money, we didn't know we was poor till people started telling us that. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's that, so that was like rich folks living in a poor folks town. I wonder if any of this is really kind of indigenous to the South because so many wonderful entertainers have had this, this, this solidarity who have come from humble beginnings particularly in the South. I think well, the South kind of brings this out, don't you? Well, I think there are wonderful, pride. warm people in the South. I mean, there are wonderful, warm people all over the world. But there's just something about the South that is just not in such a big hurry. And people born just in, not just the South, but anywhere they grow up on farms, close to nature, which brings you closer to God in a way and closer to family. And you depend on yourself, your own instincts. You, you, you kind of come up with a great amount of common sense, horse sense. You just seem to know what to do. Mm -hmm. And that horse sense that, that came from my growing up has been the biggest asset in, in the way that I do business and the way that my success has come. Because you can't trick me. You cannot fool me. Uh, I mean, you may think you have, but you don't really. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm always aware of that. And I take pride in that. I take that from my dad a lot and my, and my mom. Uh, that I just, I know people, I, I just love people, and I also trust my own instincts about things and people. Yeah, I think I, I read a quote from you, and I always get in trouble when I try to requote someone, but that you said, um, no matter uh, how big you become in the business, that you think you'll always retain that common sense. Oh, I, I'm certain of it. In fact, I, I use it so much, anything that you use to the point to, of developing it, you know, it just becomes your greatest asset really mm -hmm. and if uh, if I had to say one of the things that was one of the biggest uh, and you know most important things that I possess it would be my common sense mm -hmm. that good old earth sense I don't have a an education uh, that much I mean I went through high school but I didn't I wasn't that good in school so it's probably about the same as seventh grade education for me but uh, my horse sense graduated from college <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Uh, you're about to do your next movie. will be Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. Yeah. With Burt Reynolds. And I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a musical comedy, which I've, I think that'll be a real fun project to do. When do you start that? It's supposed to start it in June this summer. That should be fantastic. What about in the future? Are you looking ahead two years, three years from now as far as movies go? What would you like to do? Well, I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm going to finish The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas before I commit myself to anything else. I want to see and know if I'm going to like it, if I don't want that kind of pressure, or if I really, and I don't know what the audience is going to think yet either, you know, about the film. I don't even know if I'll be that popular in them, but there's a good chance I might be, or if I work at it, that I could be. So I'll just have to see if I like it, and I'm going to write a lot of films if I stay in them, or write films for other people even if I don't, write the music for them, publish some books I've written, and write better songs, make better records, and just try to be an all-around better entertainer and better human being. And I hope you won't give up personal appearances. Oh, no. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. I love to write and record and perform live to the audience, the kind of people that work all week and save up their money or really put their stuff out to try to come see you. Those are the people I like, not the people that it's so handy to, to try to work in the business all the time, where people are so critical. You never really know who your fans are and, sure. and all that. So I love the real people. I love the people that love the music and that appreciate the fact that you've come to town because I certainly appreciate them. Exactly. Dolly, thank you so much for thank taking you. this time out. We're going to take a look at a scene from your movie right now. Oh, okay. And then I'll be back to talk with Maurice Bender. So here's okay. a scene right now for, from 9 to 5. <laughs> okay. I'd like